how did you what please detail the journey that you went on to to write this book and why it's of concern to you yeah okay well um i started traveling to the congo um five years ago um, i've been doing research on slavery and child labor for about 20 years uh traveling all around the world documenting slaves and child laborers human trafficking um, and this came across my radar um, maybe seven years ago. Um, people started talking in the field about cobalt. Cobalt's in the batteries. It's in the Congo. The conditions are horrible. And I had no idea. I never heard of this. Uh, so I started planning to take trips to get down there. And I took my first trip um, back in 2018. Um, my plan was I thought I would try to lay the groundwork to do some academic research. Um, and the things I saw there were so appalling and heart-wrenching and urgent that uh, I changed my approach. I thought, um, people need to know about this. Um, I, need to, I need to write a book. Uh, and so I started planning more trips, and I just kept going back. And the reason this is important, Joe, um, and we can dig into this um, in more depth, um, throughout the whole history of slavery— I mean, I'm going back centuries. Never, never in human history has there been more suffering that generated more profit and was linked to the lives of more people around the world ever, ever in history than what's happening in the Congo right now. And the reason I say that is this. The cobalt that's being mined in the Congo is in every single lithium-ion rechargeable battery manufactured in the world today, every smartphone, every tablet, every uh, uh, laptop, and crucially, every electric vehicle. Um, so you and I, we can't function on a day-to-day -day basis without cobalt, and three-fourths of the supply is coming out of the Congo. Um, and it's being mined in appalling, heart-wrenching, dangerous conditions. Um, and so that's why people need to know, because uh, by and large, the world doesn't know what's happening in the Congo. It's something that people sort of know peripherally that, you know, that the, they call them conflict minerals. And, you know, they know that they're, they're coming from an area of the world that's very poor. But I don't think people are aware of how horrible it is. There has been have been some documentaries that have been done on it, and they're all terrifying. Yeah. So. So conflict minerals was phase one, and that's actually not cobalt. Um, what is what? What's term? What does it refer to? Conflict. So minerals? conflict minerals, uh, also called the three TG minerals, are tin, tungsten, tantalum, and gold. Um, and those are in the eastern Congo, and that um, catastrophe started uh, around the year two thousand, uh, late nineteen nineties, two thousand. Um, shortly after the Rwandan genocide. Um, the militias moved in, and the Eastern Congo is sitting on some of the largest reserves in the world of those 3TG um, minerals, especially tantalum. And those are all used in microprocessors. And you can think back to, you know, around the year 2000, uh, mobile phones first started coming out and gaining traction. I still remember my little StarTac flip phone that mm -hmm. I had from Motorola. You remember that? Sure. Uh, and all that supply was coming out of Eastern Congo. Militias and warlords were um, uh, forcing the local population at gunpoint, machete point, to dig this stuff out. And it was flowing up into the formal supply chain into mostly um, those first-generation cell phones. And uh, that became known as conflict minerals. Uh, cobalt started later. Cobalt really took off about 10, 12 years ago. And it's in another part of the country, in the mining provinces in the southeast of the Congo. And cobalt took off because uh, it was started to be used in lithium ion batteries to maximize their charge and stability. Um, and it just so happens that the Congo, just as it was sitting on more than half the world's reserves of coltan and of course a lot of gold and diamonds and other things, is sitting on more cobalt than the rest of the planet combined. And it's in a small little patch of the Congo, southeastern corner, a part that used to be called Katanga. And uh, before anybody knew what was happening, Chinese government, Chinese mining companies took control of almost all the big mines. 
um, and the local population has been displaced, uh, is under duress, and they dig in absolutely subhuman, gut-wrenching conditions for a dollar a day, feeding cobalt up the supply chain into all the phones, all the tablets, and especially electric cars. And we're looking at a video now. Jamie, what is this? The mines? This is his video. So I think so. This is yeah. so crazy to see. This is the bottom of the supply chain of your iPhone, of your Tesla, of your Samsung. I mean, I'm just naming those companies. Right. Uh, it's all of them, right? All of them. We're not just picking on them. And here's what you need to know, Joe, about this video. I, I was the first outsider to get into this mine. Uh, and that's why it's just a really short video that I was, I was able to take. This is an industrial cobalt mine where there's not supposed to be one artisanal miner. Now, that's the term used for people who are just digging by hand as opposed to tractors and excavators. There's not supposed to be one here. That's what the story is told at the top of the chain. This mine, and I can name it, it's called Shabara. There's not supposed to be one artisanal miner here, according to the consumer-facing tech companies and EV companies buying this cobalt. Lo and behold, I walk into this place, and this is what I see. There's more than 15,000 human beings crammed into that pit, digging by hand. And if you have sound, you hear the mallets, you hear the shouting, you hear the, the grunts. It's a mass of humanity. You might expect to see a scene like this. So there's a term that gets used, clean cobalt. There's no clean cobalt. It's not real. No, no. It's all marketing. It's all PR. It's a fiction. Just like that place, there's not supposed to be any artisanal mining there. It's all done industrially. That's the, that's the story told at the top of the chain. And people assume, people, I mean, the, the marketing teams at big tech and EV companies assume, well, who's going to go down there and actually walk into the place and grab a video that shows, no, it's actually all raw human force that is clanking that cobalt out of the ground. So there's no clean cobalt. I, there's not a single company on planet Earth that makes a device that has a rechargeable battery in it, that can reliably and justifiably claim that their cobalt isn't coming from sources like that. Uh, and that's the truth that needs to get out there. That's the truth people need to understand um, uh, because this is a story that goes back generations. There's these fictions told at the top of the chain about what conditions are like at the bottom. 